We're going to be continuing our, our parable series. Very, very excited. Uh, if we can't, I mean, we, we, we got to do it again. The, the teams did such an incredible job last week. Can you give the teams a round of applause? Today we're going to be looking at Luke 18. Luke 18. I'm going to start reading from verse 1. Luke 18, 1 says, Then Jesus told the disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Right? That's powerful. I'm not sure how you came in here today. I'm not sure what your week has been like. I'm not sure what the, the, the drive here has been like. I'm not sure what your week upcoming is going to be like. If I was, I would work a different job and receive a lot more money for seeing into the future. I have no idea about these things. But what I do know is this. And if this is the only thing you take from everything they said this morning, then we're in a good place. No matter what, always pray and never give up, no matter what. If things are going incredible, always pray and never give up. If you're hanging in there, hoping for things to get better, always pray and never give up. And if you are feeling like this is going really bad, always pray and never give up. Because of who you're praying to. In this parable, it says the judge did not care about God or people. Essentially just a, a, a pretty, just a, a bad guy. We're going to assume he was a Cowboys fan. Um, his backup team was probably the Patriots. And he poured the milk in the bowl before the cereal. Just, you can't, you can't trust, you can't trust this guy. Um, just not, not a great judge, right? And then you have this widow who keeps coming back to him, seeking justice. Now, that's very important. She's seeking just. She, all she's asking for here is fair legal protection. That's it. And the judge is essentially, well, this, and this, this lady is so annoying. She keeps coming, like a mosquito. She keeps coming back, and I swat and swat and spray myself down with all this stuff, and she keeps, and she's eventually going to come and just, suck all my blood, so how about I just give her what she wants? Now, what she wants is justice, just her fair legal protection. And the judge's thought process here is, well, my lack of compassion is being trumped by her pestering, so I will give her justice. Verse 6, listen to what the unjust, just, the unjust judge says. Now, if you're familiar with 11th grade English class, um, you know what a foil is. Now, a foil is a character in literature that exists just to highlight the attributes of the main character. For instance, if comic books are your thing, and I'm going to try very hard to get this right, guys, um, Bizarro, right? Bizarro is everything that Superman is not. He Actually, I think I've, if he speaks backwards as well. Um, everything that Jesus, I'm sorry, everything that, that, that Superman is not this bizarro guy is. So if, if Superman is good, bizarro is bad. If Superman wants to go left, bizarro goes right. He does all the opposite stuff. Agent Smith in The Matrix for everyone else. Um, <laughs> he's everything that Neo is not, so he highlights the characters about who Neo is. This judge is not God. The judge in this parable is not God, nor is he similar to God. 
He's completely different. He exists just to highlight the qualities of who God, God is actually not in this parable. The character of God or someone representing God is not here. You have the judge who is the opposite, complete, complete different of God. Now, let, let's thought process again. If someone who doesn't care about man's needs or God can be annoyed enough to grant justice, then a God full of mercy, full of compassion, full of love, full of power will, of course, grant eternal justice to those that, that, that he calls his children. The judge here is not everything wrong with this judge. God is everything right about that. Where the judge gets annoyed, God says, keep coming. When, 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 when the judge is, I'm just, how, how can I get you away from me? The judge says, I want you to come to me. Uh, this judge is not God. If the lady at Chipotle will give you an extra scoop of rice just for asking for it, then of course your, your grandmother will seek that you're never hungry ever again and will go above and beyond to make sure that you, you have food all the time. If a stranger will say bless you when you sneeze, well, then, of course, your parents are going to make sure that you're in an environment where, where your health can be taken care of. These, these are two, two separate things that highlight God, the grandmother, and the parent. If, if this judge, though annoyed, still sought out to seek justice and give justice, well, then, of course, God, in his perfect everything, will strive to no end to make sure we get justice as well. This parable is not about bugging God with prayer until he gives you what you want. This parable is about God ultimately providing justice to his children. So always pray and never give up because God's desire is to provide justice for his children. Constant prayer isn't to remind God about your requests. Constant prayer is to remind you about who you're presenting your request to. I'll say it again. God doesn't forget what you asked for, and you now have to remind him what you, what you want. We pray over and over and over again to remind ourselves about who God is. Extremely, extremely big difference. Um, if you're familiar with, uh, what do I talk about? I talk about mistakes that I've made. I talk about lessons I'm learning from Lucas and marriage. I talk about my dad. Uh, when my dad got diagnosed with cancer, we were under the assumption that because it was caught early, we're going to surgery, medication, and then he's back, back to normal. Actually, the guy that was in the room right next to him uh, going through the same procedure walked out the hospital um, two days after the procedure. Uh, my dad didn't walk for a week and a half, two weeks. Um, then I had to, and then at, at one point the doctor said, um, I think it's, it's probably better for him to be at home. Maybe he'll be more, more comfortable there. I, I never thought that a 21, 22 year old Stephen would have to carry my dad upstairs and not like help him upstairs, but carry my father up upstairs. It was a very, very dark time, uh, for my family, um, there was a, a, a couple nights where we actually had to send my brother and sister to stay with someone else because we, we didn't think it was healthy for them to see my dad in, in, in this state. Uh, there was a couple nights that, that he, just because of the pain, he was, he, he just, he reacted very strangely to the surgery. Um, he would get seizures just from the pain he was in. Um, and there's not really much you can do about that because I think there's a certain amount of pain that you can't be given medication at home that's going to take it away. Um, so he's seizing up. Uh, uh, and there was, there was one night in particular where he was uh, he couldn't lay down because it hurt to lay down. So he was trying to sleep sitting, and he was drenched in sweat um, just from, from fighting the, the shakes the whole night. And I stood over him, and I prayed. And I, I wish I could tell you what I prayed about. All I know is that I was praying from about 11 o'clock that night until like four or five in the morning the next morning. Uh, now what was also happening was there was a, a hurricane warning that had gone around uh, in, in the area that, that we lived in. Our neighbors had evacuated. Um, there were sirens throughout the night and you could hear 
what sounded like just the world ending uh, around the house. The pain didn't necessarily go away. And I know that, I know that for sure was in my prayer. Please help, help. My, I, I thought I was watching my dad die. Um, God, please take away the, the suffering. And the next morning, we go outside. Our neighbor's roof is gone. Um, there's trees all over the street. It looks like a bomb went off on, on, on our street. And in our backyard, there's a, a beach ball that uh, we actually, we, we don't know how it got to our house ever, but it just ended up in our backyard. The location where that ball was pre-hurricane was the exact same spot that it was post-hurricane. Ball didn't move. Now, sure, if you want to, if, if you're that guy, yell the wind probably spun it around a little bit and put it back in. Sure, go for it. You can have that. What I saw was God listening to my prayer and protecting the family. Was my dad in pain? Absolutely. But had our neighbors stayed in their house, I'm not sure they would still be our neighbors. It's funny because we, 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 ask, we ask for, for th- it, my, my dad is still sick right now. But the God that tells the wind where to go is significantly bigger than cancer. Now, that does not mean I can pray hard enough to remove the cancer. What it does mean is that in my prayer, I will develop a level of trust in God that's going to make it possible for me to handle whatever the outcome of the cancer is. That's how you alleviate bitterness. That's how you remove the, oh, God took so-and-so away. Always pray and never give up because of who God is and what God is able to do. That's, That's who we're praying to. That's not this judge. We're praying to a God that Care, love, mercy, power, compassion, all of that. But he exists on a different realm than us. Even when we think, here's what I need, how, how, how about I protect your house? How about I, I keep the winds away from you guys so that you're able to not have the additional stress of a caved-in roof while your dad is recovering from, from this? So that, That's the who we're praying to. The when, all the time. The where, everywhere. Two easy points. Uh, Now, the what, what do we get when we pray? According to this parable, now, I think every parable is going to tell a different facet of God and Jesus and heaven, all of that. According to this parable, the thing that we get is justice, divine justice. And here's what I think we get wrong. Someone hurts us, right? Or someone cuts you off in traffic. And then we start to get very spiritually unspiritual. (laughs) Like, man, if you would have cut me off before Jesus. In In my BC days, man, oh, you know what? Vengeance belongs to God. Okay, you know, I'm, God, do your thing. I'm going to just sit back here and let you take your vengeance on that sinner that cut me off. And vengeance goes from something that belongs to God, which means we're not supposed to think about it, to an attribute of God that we can use like a genie. Like, that hurt me. I'm not going to go chase the guy down because I'm afraid to go to jail. So, God, you go ahead and do your thing because vengeance is yours. In the same way, justice has kind of shifted a little bit to become our preferred outcome, how we would like things to go. I've said said it before, and here's the situation again. There is no such thing as an unanswered prayer. Does not exist. Imagine that logic somewhere else. It's like, hey, bro, ask this girl to marry me. Wow. Wow, how, how'd it go? Still waiting for an answer. Okay. Well, what, what did she say? I'm just still, 
Did she say no? Mm -hmm. Yep. It doesn't make sense. I asked for a raise. What did your boss say? Oh, I'm still waiting for an answer. Well, what, what did your boss say? Well, he said no. Sounds a lot like an answer to me. It may not be what you want, but no is an answer. God, I want this. You know what? In, in looking at you, Stephen, I, I, I don't think that's a – sure, it might be nice, but it's not, it doesn't maximize your opportunity to seek and stay in me. So, so no. I'm just still praying for it, uh, waiting for an answer. The answer is no. So justice is what's just in God's eyes. Not, and when, when it's the same in our eyes, it's beautiful. We love that. We love those prayers. Like, I prayed for this, and it worked out, and it's clear that God's moving. Amen. But there are times that we try to be co-workers with God in the, in the presentation of justice and, and create scenarios that seem to suggest, oh, God's speaking here, where you just did a lot of work to make that happen. That is not justice. That's just our thinking. That's just your selfishness. That is just the way that you process things. That is not justice. All, it's just you in the equation. Not just this, just you. Just Stephen. It's just Stephen. Justice is what's right in the eyes of God. Then we become like entitled children that, you know, Santa didn't get me what I want. I'm not going to say anything else because there's kids here. But you get what I'm trying to say. What do you get? What does God promise? Justice. Quickly. And quickly. You will see, you, uh, he will see that they get justice and quickly. So always pray and never give up because quickness is relative to your perspective. It's, man, it, it's, it's been such a long time since the Giants won a Super Bowl. But if I was an Eagles fan, what I would say is, man, that must, you must feel like yesterday when you guys won because I don't, I don't know what that feels like. <laughs> Quickness, time, is all relative to your perspective. <laughs> when you factor in eternity in heaven, into our thought process. All of this, done. When you factor in forever with no pain, no suffering, no cancer, no hurt, what's this? What's all the difficulties that happen here when you plug in eternity? Now, if you're worried about 75, 80 years, oh yeah, a couple years of suffering is really bad. That's really tough, especially if you're entitled. It's very challenging. But when you plug in eternity, we're done. And it's hard because we're here and you're feeling it. Plug in eternity and all this changes. But I think we, we get so caught up in politics and social issues that we forget that justice on earth isn't even really that great. Really, if you think about it. You know, there's, there's and I'm, I'm not, no political stance here at all. But your idea of justice may actually hurt someone else really bad. What you think is the right thing to do in this situation, or here's what I would do if I was there, that would be just. It's, very, it's limited to just you. Plug in eternity, plug in heaven, and justice is great. So we need to always pray and never give up. Always pray and never give up because what you're praying for is justice and God promises justice to his children. Philippians 4. Philippians 4, we're going to read from verse 4. 
It says, rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Again, with the perspective there. Uh, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Prayer and petition with thanksgiving does not get you the thing that you prayed for and petitioned for. This is, this is a very un-American passage right here. Because what we want is I have faith in God, I believe in God, I'm going to ask God for whatever it is that I want, and if God is real, he'll give it to me. We don't have time at all today. But in preparation for this, I looked up every time Jesus gave instruction about prayer, and I got to be honest, initially it was discouraging. Reading it just in, in, in the in the context and a selfish mentality, thinking about the right here, right now rewards, it was discouraging. Because God's promises are plugged into eternity. They're plugged into an eternal perspective. And if you think that you're gonna get what you want because you're righteous through prayer, you are asking for discouragement. What this passage says, prayer, petition, and thanksgiving gives you the peace of God, which doesn't make sense outside this equation. It does not, if you've lost someone very dear to you and you've implemented this passage and you feel at work, you, you, you know what this is talking about. Or of course I'm sad, but I have hope. Of, of, of course I'm I'm not, I'm not happy with the outcome, but I can see potential for this to end up being great. Of, of, of course, my, my right now isn't amazing, but there's an eternity in heaven. Notice how Thanksgiving here is before anything happens. If, if they were to take a transcript of your prayers in 2016, from January to right now, just, just the words. Would someone read that and say, this is a prayer of a grateful person? This person is grateful. Just based on the things that this person prays about. Every prayer that, that Stephen has prayed in 2016, the thing that jumps out of here is his gratitude. He is so grateful for who God is and what God promises. Or am I complaining a lot and asking for situations to be different? And then frustrated, frustratedly praying again because the situations haven't changed. With prayer, petition, and thanksgiving, you want a peace of God? Try the peace of God. You, I don't think God worries about that much stuff. I think he's actually pretty okay with how things are and how they're going to turn out. I'm pretty sure he's very confident that, hey, at the end of the day, my will will be done, so <laughs> this is great. Without, the, without tapping into God in this, this is, Christianity is too difficult. This is too difficult. You can't. It's, I, I, I don't think you want to take that risk of trying to do Jesus without first being gratitude, without first being grateful for what you've been given the opportunity to do. If you're waiting for results to be grateful, be careful. Because then you're justified to do whatever you want if you don't get the, the results that you want. But if you want justice plugged into a heavenly perspective, try the peace of God, which comes, with, which comes from being grateful before you ask for anything. I hope, I hope Lucas is grateful before he asks for things. I, have a, I, I, I wish that I could go back in time to the first time that I, I understood request and the supply and demand relationship between a father and son um, to, to, to see if, if that, I'm pretty sure it wasn't my, my attitude. Uh, but I can imagine that changes the dynamic in a way that is extremely beneficial for the son to be grateful 
prior to the request. I think it'll change the way we pray as well. Uh, I wasn't sure I was going to talk about this. I, I saw someone die uh, a week ago, two weeks ago. Myself and Paul were, uh, were talking at UMBC, and this guy, a professor, sitting maybe, I don't know, all of 10 feet from us, collapsed, had a heart attack, and had no anything for an hour and a half. EMTs came. People were crying. There was a circle formed around him. The, co- the police came, separated everyone again. Uh, the EMT said, he's gone. So if you guys can clear and kind of give respect to, to him, and, and there was a, 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 you can imagine lots of commotion uh, at, at the time, and I prayed. I, honestly, my prayer was, I hope that somehow someone can see, utilize this as a spark to get them closer to God. What I found out last Friday was that on route to the hospital, he got color back and is now recovering. Now, I, 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 am, not, I am not brave enough to say that I prayed this guy back to life. What I am confident, though, is that because I prayed, and I found out that he's going to be okay, I have a very, very unique trust in God right now because now I'm aware I was communicating with God, and I saw something that God obviously did. So whether my communication has something to do with that or not is irrelevant to to the fact that he did that, and I was talking to him. When we're grateful first, when we, when, when we, that's why I didn't want to bring it in, because I don't know, I, it, it only fit the, it fit the point that I was going to cut out. You get what I'm saying? Great. You get what I'm saying, right? Amen. It, ch- it's, it changed my life. Both parts. This, this seeing what I thought was a man die in front of me, and hearing that, He's going to be okay. Both of those changed my, changed my life. And I don't think it would have had the same effect if I had not prayed in that scenario. Because then it's just a cool story of someone we thought died and, and isn't dead anymore. But I talked to God while it was happening. It changes everything. John, John 14, and we'll close. Always pray, never give up. Because of who God is, because of what he promises. And here's why. And the ushers, you guys can get ready to pass the... Oh, no. Every, uh, if anyone still needs one of those communion cups, please make, make it, put your hand up, and we can get that to you. Perfect. John 14. In verse 12. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I've been doing. And they will do even greater than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. This is one of those, those scriptures that I thought was conflicting with, with what I found everywhere else. I'm like, well, it seems like Jesus right here, if I isolate one verse... Is saying anything I ask, he'll do it. Well, I've tried that, and that doesn't always work the way that I would like. But if you factor in everything going on here, what's Jesus is talking about? Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to leave, and my departure isn't very glorious. I'm going, I'm going to get, I'm going to get crucified. I'm going to get torn to pieces, and then I'm going to be the middleman between you and God. I'm going to be your, your, your lawyer in this situation. Uh, I'm the reason that communication with God is going to be possible. Prior to this, there was all sorts of holes and and, uh, hoops you have to jump through, but because of what I'm about to do for you, 
because I'm about to sacrifice, I'm going to die a very painful, embarrassing death because, what you, you're, because your life deserves pain and embarrassment. I'm going to take that instead of you. I'm going to die, and then I'm going to, here, here's the number. Here's God's phone number. You no longer have to call a secretary anymore. Here's his direct line, and you can communicate with him. And whatever you ask in my name will be given. See, see how, how the, the whatever you ask then it, it has a different, carries a different meaning there? It's like, in, in Jesus, what are we praying for in Jesus? Not by plugging his name in our prayers, but by attaching ourselves to his will. Huge difference. Because if, if left up to my will, oh, I have a list. I want this, this, I would like that, this would be great. But plugged into Jesus' will, plugged into God's will for my life, man, I want to be faithful. I want to bring people to God. I don't want to let the, the, the craziness of the world pollute my mind. Th- those are things that are in God's will. Now, I need to pray for that so, I can, so me and God can agree that that's the case. I need to, so I've, I've communicated with Hannah every day for seven years. I, I did the math yesterday. Seven years without fail. Every day I've communicated with Hannah, and it's changed who I am. I, I talk different. I speak different. I speak different. I, see, I talk different. Because that's Hannah's influence on me. Hannah would say I talk different. I speak different and talk different. I'm, I'm different in both ways. When we're connected in constant communication, ooh, connected in constant communication with, with God, it becomes a lot easier to understand and implement his will. And that's what we should be praying about. And I can't stress enough, this is not saying don't pray God, needs to, God knows what's in your heart, but again, when you factor in eternity and gratitude, I think there are some things that maybe we would just maybe don't feel that are that important anymore, but I'm present everything to God, but understand what his will is, and in the prayer, understand that the big picture is, I just need to make sure that my life is in accordance with God's will. You know what made that possible? Jesus dying on the cross. That's, that was the, that was the, the cost of, of the, of the, the here, here's, here's a direct line. It wasn't just, you know, God's here and available, go to him as you please. Jesus had to come, take on all our junk, and die to allow us to have constant communication to, to a God that, that is all-powerful, all-merciful, all-loving, all to a God that wants to give us justice on an eternal uh, spectrum, the God that, that, that can listen to us anywhere or anytime. The thing that, that activated that was Jesus dying on the cross. Prayer, as we understand it, is impossible before Jesus does what he does. The, 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 the fact that we're allowed to pray in the manner that we're allowed to pray, this, this direct access, Jesus did that. Jesus made that possible. The I don't, I don't know if you could, I, actually, I do know, that we, you can't walk up to Barack Obama right now and ask for something, or even have a conversation with him. And he's just a person. He's just a, an individual at the end of the day. The maker of everything has said, I so desperately want to stay in communication with you, not for me, but because of who you become when you're in constant communication with me. And I'm going to make that possible by sacrificing my son. I think that has to change the way we pray. I think it has to change the way we think about prayer. I think it has to change the way we think about what, what, what we're praying about. I think all of this, when, when plugged in to who God is, what he's done for us, when he allows us to pray, where he lets us pray, and why he gives us the opportunity to, I think you plug all of those things in, it's just, God is amazing. God's incredible. God is not like the judge in this parable. Very different, very loving, very merciful, extremely compassionate, and because of the extent he was willing to go to sacrifice his son for his body to be, to be torn and his blood to be, uh, to, to, to be all over the place, now we have access to communication with that God. That's the God we're praying to. That's the God that, that we need to hold. always pray. 
never give up. Always pray and never give up because of all of this. God hasn't given up on us. And God has open communication. Here, pray to me whenever you want so that we can change, so that we can be part of the incredible miracles that, that, he, that, that, that he'll do. Always pray, never give up. We're going to pray for the communion. Uh, you have those, those cups, the, the bread on, on, on top, um, is what we take to remember the, the, the body of Jesus that was hung on the cross, and the, the, the juice represents his blood that was spilled for, for our sins. And as we take this and pray, remember what made this possible. Not just taking communion, but simply talking to God was made possible because of what was done for us so many years ago on the cross. Let's pray.